Well, for me, my involvement with queer youth has affected my peers in a number of ways. Most particularly, I feel very strongly that what I'm doing is important. And in that process, I feel it's important for me to share that with other people. Uh, it sometimes results in getting uh, additional funding for projects, which is important to me. But it's also an educational process. Uh, I oftentimes uh, use the word queer, and I use the word queer, which I self-identify as, and I use the word queer very directly because I think that it is a way of forcing people to look at a broader context and to recognize that, particularly in my case, queer youth are a wonderful resource, and it's something that as a gay man, that I think we ought to be doing more to ensure that queer youth reach their full potential. And that's what, what, I, what I want people to be aware of. What can, one, what, can an organization, what can an individual or what can an organization do to increase the safety and the, um, the, the environment for queer youth, I think is a really important challenge uh, for institutions and for foundations such as the one I'm involved with and for individuals. And I guess for me, what I think is, the, is there's two pieces of that. One is to make sure that people are aware that I am queer and that I'm, I'm very content and I'm very proud of that and, and serve as a role model. The second thing which is equally important is, for, is to get involved to make sure that whether, and I oftentimes talk in terms of talents, times, and tr time and treasure, uh, we all have time, some of us don't have treasure, I'm blessed with having more than many people, and some of us have different kinds of talent. And so what I think is really important for individuals, and in turn for, for institutions, is to use their time, their talent, and their treasures for what they think is important. And for me, that passion, and I would hope for many gay and lesbians, uh, particularly those of my generation, would be to, to use those, that time, that talent, and those treasures to reach out to the, to the queer community and particularly to the youth uh, and help them as they're learning uh, their way. I'm a slow learner, and so for me, the idea of when of, of, of self-identifying as a first of all as a gay man and then later as a queer man was very late. Uh, nobody told me as I was growing up in the in the teens and the twenties and the thirties that the question I was asking myself, which was, "Am I gay or not?" was the wrong question. By the time I've determined and talked to other people, by the time one is 16 or 17 or 18, the question is not, am I gay or am I not gay, but when am I going to accept myself? And so it took me until I was 42. I'd gotten married at 40 uh, with a wonderful woman, and we didn't have any children, but I realized about a year or two later, uh, with the help of one of my dear friends who was also an usher in my wedding, uh, that the question I needed to ask was, when was I going to accept that I was gay? And shortly thereafter, I did accept that and realized that that's who I was. And it was only later, uh, probably another 15 or 20 years later, that I, that I expanded that, that idea uh, and became very happy and very willing to identify myself as a queer man. And I do that pretty regularly now because that's what I, I'm, I'm I, and to me, being queer is much different, is an expansion and, uh, and is different than simply being a gay man. And uh, so I'm very happy being queer uh, in 2014. I'm, in many ways, I'm very un-American because I don't very often go to movies. I don't watch television either, which means that I don't have a clue about some of the jokes and people that uh, my friends are talking about. But for me, uh, I love reading. And uh, so while I don't go to movies, I do enjoy reading. And I'm reading a book now, which is quite wonderful, actually, about Teddy Roosevelt and William Howard Taft and the muckrakers uh, in the early, 19th, early 20th century. Because my love, intellectual love, and is, uh, is American history and literature. So that's what I do. It's a wonderful question to ask about colors. And for me, as you can see, yellow is one of my favorite colors. It has been my favorite color for a number of years. 
Uh, I used to live in Key West and I remember coming, I, I do have other shirts that are different colors, and I remember coming to a meeting one day and a dear friend of mine came rushing up and said, Mike, what's wrong? You're not wearing a yellow shirt. And I looked down and I realized I wasn't. But for me, I've always felt that yellow is a bright, cheery color. It brings life to me. It brings light and sunshine and is just what I want to exude because I think it's important if you're walking down the street to look happy and to be bright uh, because it's always amazing to me that if you do that, about three out of one out of three or four people that you walk by who aren't smiling, when they go by you, they smile. And for me, that means that I've brightened their day, uh, hopefully in a positive way, and that makes me feel good. I first started, and I and I looking back, I first started becoming a philanthropist within the gay community. Uh, well in the 1980s, but I, I first moved into queer youth projects in the early 1990s at a time when very few of us were funding nationally uh, queer youth projects, and it was important to me. And the first project that I funded that I can remember was one that I did at my alma mater, Williams College, where I endowed a lectureship in human sexuality, which still exists. They just had their 20th anniversary uh, last year with a celebration. And it has my name on it, not because it was something that I felt was important, but a friend of mine who was also a, had done some gay funding, argued with me and said, it's really important, Mike, that for gay men who are funding and who are doing things to let people know that they're doing it. So my name is on it, and it was the first endowed uh, gay, lesbian, funding, funded project at any higher education institution in America. And it was in the early 1990s. And since then, we've been doing lots of things, including 20 queer youth theaters uh, nationally through a foundation that I created.